Warm welcome to Hammarby. Thanks, thanks a lot. Um, what are the main reasons you're taking on this task, uh, being the new head coach of, of Hammarby? Uh, first, uh, I'm very happy and proud to get a job in Hammarby, to get to work in this club. Uh, why? Because uh, I think uh, there is a big potential in the team, in the club, and the group of the players are good. So. Um, it was like challenging task for me uh, and uh, it was um, all things fitting good together with my ambition, the club's ambition and uh, uh, my private and, uh, and my football life. So that was the, the many things that ticked together that uh, were very, very good. It's your second uh, job in Swedish football as head coach. Um, what? You haven't met the players yet, but you, you will soon. Uh, what will you discuss during your first meeting with the squad? Uh, usually it's uh, these basic things. What are the work ethic, uh, how we want to work, how we want to play, what I expect from them and what they can get from me. Um, some normal things, uh, nothing uh, science fiction, nothing uh, that they didn't do before. It's uh, the good about football, there is not just one right way, it's all the, all the ways are right, just the methodology is a bit different and uh, how you train, uh, how you play, it changes from coach to coach, but I think they are so good that they will uh, very, very quick uh, settle to, to the new demands and uh, like I say, this is still football and they don't going to change the sport, just small, small details. So, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, leadership style? It's, uh, how to say, a combo of uh, Scandinavian and Balkan style. For uh, everything is uh, important to have the discipline. And uh, discipline uh, in and off the pitch, how you live, how you sleep, how you train. I don't believe that you can be very undisciplined in six days and then you come to the match and you want to be tactically disciplined. On the other hand, uh, football is play football. You don't work work football or you always say play football. So it has to be funny, it has to be excitement, it has to be the challenging environment that the players develop. If the players develop, the team will develop and it means the club will develop. So it has to be the like the rules and, re and roles and responsibilities for every one of us in staff. In staff, we have to lead by the example, and the players have to um, follow these things. But like I say, they have to enjoy to come on training. It shouldn't be like a punishment. So that's how I see on these things. And uh, I know the mentality of Scandinavian people. I've uh, been 11 years in Iceland and uh, two years here and then again now. Um, it's it shouldn't be problem. It shouldn't be problem. And uh, of course, uh, if you get result, uh, it's easier to get uh, your things working and your mentality working. It's always connected in football. And but I hope that uh, if we work good and the performance is good, the result will be there also. So that's that's my. Uh, way of leadership and uh, I try always to lead by the example and uh, and that's that's the way how I've been doing it un until now so I don't think that I will change I will I hope I will change in positive way and develop also like the players want I also want to develop and learn every day so that's that's also my motivation you you started your uh, trainer career uh, on Iceland how come you you ended up there on Iceland uh, it came first that my good friend of me went there to play football and they need uh, players there so he invited me and the goalkeeper from our old team in Serbia, uh, Timo Zajcar. And uh, I was there and the plan was not to stay too long, the plan was to stay six months but I ended up there with 11 years and uh, I feel there like my second country. I really feel good there, I have uh, really good memories and uh, I learned a lot, uh, you know, completely different culture than in Serbia, but um, very organized and but still very, very, very comfortable to to play football, to live, to to do all the things you need. 
and then I moved to Sweden and, and Mjelby. Tell us about that. Uh, in like last year coaching in Iceland because most of my time I was in Viking or starting with the youth team and then doing all the positions there um, under 14, 16, 19, head of academy, assistant, main coach, co-coach, main coach. So I saw that there it's uh, limited possibilities to develop like a coach. You, I could stay and probably change few clubs and uh, and uh, probably end there in like I, they say this hringekia or turn around in uh, the clubs. But I, my ambition was to go abroad and uh, work in some other country that is. Um, how to say more continent are all closer to the continent that uh, you can be there and uh, develop and learn and uh, be in the eyes if you do good job. So it came through the one friend of me who live in Sweden close to Hellevik in Solvesborg he lives that uh, he connect me with the people in Mjelby. First it was first talk that they wanted under 17 coach then uh, uh, it came to that that I start there like assistant coach of Jonas Anderson and um, and uh, uh, head of academy, academy director. And um, then when Jonas stepped up, uh, I took over the team in uh, 2018, I think somewhere in uh, May or June or something. And then I stay this um, season when we won the um, first division and then next year we play Super at so that's that's the short explanation how it ended up. And how was that experience uh, working in Swedish football? Uh, really good. Uh, you comparing to Iceland, uh, you get um, more homogen group of players. Uh, in Iceland, you have two, three very good, very very good. Then you have like five, six, uh, seven average or good, and then you have always in every team like some number of players that are not holding the level there because of course obviously it's a small country and their best players uh, go abroad and play everywhere in Europe and uh, USA and wherever. So the thing is that uh, here is more homogeneous group of players uh, and um, similar, similar mentality, not same but similar mentality. And um, it was funny to work there, it's uh, Hellevik is a charming Charming, really charming stadium and the town, and uh, it was good experience, of course. And now your latest uh, task has been assistant coach of uh, yeah. Red Star Belgrade. Uh, it's, it's a classic club, a big club. Uh, what made you decide to come here, leave that position, and come here? Uh, first of all, like I say, the ambition of the club and my ambition in Hammerby stack together and uh, stick in the good way. So it's uh, that's the first thing. The other thing is uh, that in uh, my development, I think after one and a half year there, I got that experience that uh, I needed to play uh, every game for every every game is to win. There is. If you win 10 games and you lose one, it's a big problem. So you have to win every game. And then the mentality there is even if you play Barcelona and lose, people are uh, not satisfied. So this is the typical, uh, how to say, one of three best clubs in old Yugoslavia. For me, best because it's my club. And uh, me 91 uh, European champion. So. Uh, the, the mentality, the winning culture, the professionalism in all the aspects there is uh, something that I didn't express before. Then also it was uh, about working with Dan who had all the be most of the best coaches in uh, Europe at the moment. He was coached by them. So I needed this experience because I lacked this experience from my playing career. So in this moment I saw that um, I need some boost again to to become better than I am today. So it uh, fit together with ambition of the club and that's why I'm here. And speaking of passion from supporters that you have, you've experienced uh, in Red Star, um, what, what are your image uh, of, of that kind of uh, the Hammarby culture around uh, the club? It's really positive and it's something that I really enjoy because uh, I was unlucky that during the stay in Red Star we just had three months supporters but in this game that we had it's like 
in derby game, 45,000 people, their whole stands are shaking when you're going out of the tunnel. It's uh, like uh, uh, very, very good experience. So the club with, with the supporters is the club with the soul. You have many new clubs that don't have this amount of the supporters. I been here in Sweden. I know the atmosphere here. I remember the atmosphere when Kennedy scored this freaky goal. So it's something that that's why you play football. Unfortunately, this Corona time cut them off the pitch. But uh, I hope soon everything will normalize and they can come and uh, be our 12th player. So during the last few years, Hammarby has established an attacking style of football uh, with uh, high intensity. Um, what is your football philosophy? Uh, I think uh, it fits together and uh, the chairman presented to me their vision of football, how they want their club uh, looks out of the pitch. I think uh, Stefan did a good job with his stuff in this uh, period. Uh, my way of football is to be proactive, to control the game, both with uh, possession and the tempo. Uh, of course, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't play defense. So this is a complete picture of how we want to play. We want to play um, very, very aggressive when it comes to attack, to have a lot of finishing, a lot of attacks. And then we also we want to be uh, aggressive, organizing discipline in the defensive part of the game. Um, formation is not something crucial for me because that's just the numbers, but uh, I have idea of how, how this team should play. And um, most usually when it comes to formation is the formation that the fit to the player squad. So we will, we will try to find the best formation that fits to the, all, all the players in the team. What's your um, image of the team you're taking over, the squad, the, the, what you have to work with? Uh, I will go in the smaller details with the team, but like I say, uh, energy, I want them that uh, they make all the supporters proud when they come and that they go to the last drop of energy they have. I want to stay a bit more compact in both phases, attack and defense, so we can react. Uh, I want them to, to, to play like a team because I'm sure we have 25 good individuals. But the most successful team are uh, not just individuals. It's 11 best who can play best together. So that's, that's I think, uh, my imagination of the team. But the quality is for sure there. The base that uh, Stefan left is also there. That is really good. The sports sector was doing good job in the recruiting. So I think there are... Uh, good uh, circumstances around that we just, like I say, have to evaluate and build on it. You have a couple of weeks uh, to get to know the players and uh, prepare for the restart of the series. What do you want to achieve until then, when, when the league starts again? Uh, I would say, like all the coaches, I have one week too short, but uh, no, it uh, should be enough time, three weeks. Uh, I want to see first in what uh, level of condition they are. And uh, the main thing is to, until in these three weeks, they have the clear fundaments how we want to play and uh, simple task in each phase of the game for uh, each line of the team, whole team and each individual player. So that they are more convenient about what we are doing and how we are doing. And uh, finally, um, what do you want to achieve here in Hammarby? Uh, I think that uh, when you have 30,000 supporters on the game, uh, you have to achieve that to win every next game. Because uh, you uh, cannot go in the, some calculation in the game. You go and you try to do your best to win every game. Uh, for me, it's very crucial that the team uh, won the trophy now 10 days ago or 15. Uh, because uh, the trophy calls trophy and uh, when you uh, get this blood on, on your mouth that you can win this and this winning feeling, I think this is something that should make uh, players more eager to win the big title, the big title, the next title, not to be satisfied and settle down. They just have to push a bit more from themselves and they push each other and we push them, of course, to win 
everything what is possible to win. Um, I cannot promise anything, but uh, I have my ambitions. I don't want to talk, I want this and I want this. I, I can guarantee the hard and professional work and uh, I believe that can pay off. And uh, I would like to talk less and uh, do more on the pitch and then we see the results.